Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia and today we are going to talk about the 2020 Kia Forte LX but this one is going to be the manual transmission. So we are live, if you're looking around me and you're saying, okay, what's going on, where are you? We are in our unfinished video bay. So our unfinished video bay is because this is all part of our COVID-19 stuff. We are doing live videos but the place that we are located is uh, unfinished because our construction tr crew has gone home because of uh, you know different other situations that are going on. So we are here, just give me a second to get set up here. I am going to, uh, when I say get set up, I'll show you what I'm doing actually. We'll switch the camera around here. All right, I am just gonna get my computer screen going. So again, if you're just joining us, I'm just getting started here. We're gonna refresh this page here and that'll allow me to see some of your uh, comments. Somebody asked, what's the cost? We're gonna get to that, great question. Okay. So let me go live just because what happens with my screen here, what I'm looking at is um, your comments will show up on my screen for just a split second and then they'll disappear. So what I'm gonna do is have my computer here. All right, so we are set up there. So again, if you're just joining us, let me go around this way. I got my new camera mount here, which takes a little while to move around. All right, if you're just joining us, we are in our unfinished video bay. Uh, let me just close this door here. This is what happens with live video when you're unprepared. So I am working essentially in isolation over here. Certainly social distancing is a thing that we are doing. And again, this is our unfinished video bay. So we are uh, bringing cars in here. You can see there's no lighting. I do uh, have some interior lighting that I brought into the car, so we'll be able to see that better. And we are doing these video series as part of our COVID-19 stuff where I can come to you. And the idea behind these is that you interact with us. So if you have questions and you're watching live, ask me in the live feed. If you have questions after the fact, ask me in the comments below. Every day at two o'clock, we are gonna come to you from this, again, unfinished area. And we're gonna talk about a different car. So tomorrow, if you're interested, we're gonna do the uh, Kia Niro SX. So top of the line Kia Niro. Today, we're starting with the 2020 Kia Forte LX manual transmission. So, somebody asked me right off the top, what's the price? Well, before I get to the price, we're gonna go to a little story time here. My camera's having trouble with my movements. Excuse the mess. All right, here we are. We're looking at my computer screen again. This right here, that there is not a picture of my first car, but it is a picture of the same car I had, bright red 2002 Hyundai Elantra. So $2,002, this car, no ABS, uh, you know, basic cloth seats. It did have a six speaker stereo. In $2,002, this MSRP was $18,500 and I thought it was a great deal. Now, $2020, oh, I'm having trouble. When I move and I move my camera, it has to work with me. So $2020, I want you to look at the MSRP of this car. $17,695, basically $1,000 less than my first brand new car in 2002, which was also a manual transmission. It did have fancy alloy wheels, as you saw there. This one does not. It did not have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, height adjustable seat. There's a whole bunch of things. So when we talk about cars getting more and less expensive, this car is a screaming good value. So let's just walk around for a second. So again, we're talking 2020 cars. And as we talk 2020 cars, you sh I should point out um, the 2019 version of this car was a runner-up for Canadian Car of the Year. Anybody have an idea of what the winner of the 2019 Canadian Car of the Year was? I'll let you comment for a second before I get to that. So this one was a runner-up, top three finalists for Canadian Car of the Year. And it did lose that to a sp specific car. We'll see if anybody jumps on and knows that. You guys are all Googling probably right now. So what I love about this car is it's got tons of room, tons of space, tons of features. And like I said, it was a runner up to the Kia Stinger for our uh, car of the year. So a lot of things I wanna show you, just little details about this car. We're gonna go a little bit in depth because again, there are a few less features than some of our loaded models, but there's a lot of little things I can tell you about. Uh, yeah, Telluride, somebody guessed, that's right. Telluride was not Canadian car of the year in 2019. Uh, so again, the Forte runner-up for Canadian Car of the Year 2019, lost to the Stinger, the Kia Stinger. There we go, Jason's got it with the Stinger. All right, we're going to show you from front to back on this car. We're going to walk right through. If you have questions along the way, even if I miss them, we will stop a couple times to go back to my computer so I can read them. Sometimes they show up on screen and I have trouble reading them, talking, and trying to stay 
train of thought. So feel free to ask as many questions as you want and I'll get to a bunch of them. I'm gonna take a look at the front of this car to start. So this is where things start with Kia. Now, yes, there is the Kia Rio. And again, in other markets, there are other Kias. This one is um, really where we start from a practical purpose. We do sell some Kia Rios, but we sell a lot of Kia Fortes. What you get off the bat here, projector beam headlights. Now those used to be the high-end headlights on uh, other cars. So what is a projector beam headlight? They are not the LED lights. They are not the crazy, crazy extra bright ones. What they are is a very focused light. And I'm trying to get a good view to the side here. So that projector beam headlight, that's got a rounded kind of area on the front of the actual bulb area, that gives you a very focused beam. And what that does, it gives you a nice sharp cutoff, really good control of where they put the light on the road. Down there is your signal lights. Another thing I'm gonna show you down on the side here, see those sort of open vents there? Those open vents actually come in through here. Let me just sort of get around and show you. Oh, can we see them on camera? Not so much. Yeah, on the left side of your screen, so right in this area, there's an open vent there. What that does is it allows the air to go through. It reduces turbulence, it helps with uh, aerodynamic efficiency, and uh, that's something you'll see on a lot of our cars that people don't realize, and it doesn't happen on everybody else's car, but it's just little details to help with efficiency. So again, we're looking at a base, base, base car. Of course, Kia doesn't have base cars. All of our SUVs have alloy wheels. This one does not, but it does have a nice uh, metallic looking grill at the front and uh, some detail down here. We'll show you the wheels. They are 15 inch wheels. Now the Forte is a tricky car because it can have 15, 16, 17, or 18 inch wheels, depending on the trim line. If you were tuning in last week, you saw that we did the Forte 5 GT. Uh, that has 18 inch alloy wheels. This one, again, entry level model, starts with uh, all season tires and they do have a uh, wheel cover. So that means in Canada anyways, if you're switching to winter tires, you keep the same tire size, you can just throw that wheel cover on your winter tires and it looks the same all year round, which is kind of a nice feature if you're looking for basics. Now we talked about my 2002 Hyundai Elantra before. The big selling feature on that car is that Elantra GT had four wheel disc brakes, disc brakes front and rear. Of course, this car also has that. Show you the back end here. It is a little bit darker on this side. We'll try to get a little close and let the camera do its thing. You do have a little bit of a stylized light. They're not just the basic lights that you used to see. These are not the LED lights that you can get on the higher trims. Lights are off right now. There's just a little bit of reflection in there. But you can see there's a little bit of pattern to there. You have your signal lights right down there. Now, I'll get ahead of this right now. A lot of people complain that the brake lights and signal lights are in different areas. Here's my point. That distance there on this car is no further than the distance on many SUVs between, you know, like something like a Honda CRV, brake light up top, signal light down low. They're actually fairly close together. So just because they're not in the same light cluster, a lot of people tell me that that's not ideal. Um, you can see a blinking light anywhere. If that light blinks right now, you will definitely notice it. So I don't think it's a safety concern that a lot of people try to make that case about. All right, we're going to hop inside this car in a second. Actually, we'll do that right now. Let me just do one thing because we realized that we were working without good light. So we brought in our detailer's sort of cross car light, which should help me show you parts of the car. Actually, before I hop in, I do want to show you the key. Base level car, remember that. Let me get into the regular natural daylight here. Oh, camera's having trouble. It's trying to correct my movements here. All right, coming back around. There we go. This is the key now. So what they've done with our key is they've moved all the controls right there, which means you have sort of a detonator style lock to lock the car, unlock, you can also pop the trunk, we'll get to that in a second, and you have a little red light there above my thumb which blinks when uh, you activate it. What they've done is they moved the buttons to the side from here. What that does is it keeps it from accidentally going off in your pocket where you fold your pants or you're maybe you bend your leg and you hit this area. This is a jackknife style key, so when I hit this button, it pops up like that. You can see there it's where it came from, and it is a key right there. So, jackknife style key, just a key fob in your pocket. Uh, I'm gonna turn the car on, but not start it. So as we come in here, bear with me, my uh, device is fighting me just a little bit to keep it steady for you. Okay, start the car, it is a key start car. So again, I'm not gonna start it, so you'll see some engine lights on there. I am gonna turn the climate system off just so we have less fan, and I'm gonna shut the door so you can see the dash. Base level car. So this is, again, where it all begins. Let me show you in the center of the dash there. You can see some fuel economy stuff. Uh, 
scrolling down, lots of that. Speedometer, digital speedometer if you want. You can also do all kinds of settings here. So we can adjust all kinds of things, uh, door, other stuff. So you have a huge settings menu in there. Simple to use, you can do it right from your thumbs. And of course, a nice, clear, easy to read gauges. Here's the big thing in this car. So again, entry-level car, $1,000 less than my very first car, which had none of this equipment. My first car didn't even have ABS brakes. If you'll notice what it says right there on the right side of the screen, this is an eight inch screen, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So yeah, a lot of people think, okay, that's great. I can text, I can do those things on the screen. The big thing you're forgetting is what that does is that gives you uh, navigation right from your cell phone, right in this screen. So a huge feature on an entry level car to get navigation on that screen. Don't worry about the battery discharge warning. Like I said, the car's not running just because we are inside. The other thing this screen does is Throw in reverse and you get a nice clear backup camera. Now, I don't know if you can see how clear that is on camera, but in real life, that is a super clear backup camera. Um, better than many high-end cars that we've gotten in here on trade recently. Even like Cadillac Escalade does not have a near as nice a camera as this one does. So that's what that big screen does. And the thing Kia wins a lot of awards for is this touchscreen system here has a lot of hard buttons there. I read an article today about how a lot of manufacturers are moving away, especially Honda, moving away from their touchscreen only devices and uh, having hard buttons. A lot of these buttons are just duplicate buttons. It even has a button here you can set up to do anything you want it to do. So you can set it to, you know, go to Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. That's what we do in my personal car. Um, so you can just bring that up right away. So we come along the dash here, a little bit of a metallic trim, goes into those uh, Stinger style vents, uh, sort of a echoing the Stinger style vents there. Now, one cool thing about these vents, I'll come over this side, hopefully we can see it with enough light. This vent here, of course, you can aim it left or right or up or down. If you turn this knob that I'm on right there, that actually closes the vent. So it's a sort of multi-purpose thing. So kind of a cool uh, way of doing things. We're going to go back to the center. We're going to scroll down over here. So there's your climate control. Air conditioning standard in this car. Um, even on the entry level uh, version of the car. I'm going to try to get in here. You can see what right here that is a space to put your cell phone now on the higher trim levels you can drop your cell phone there and it will wire wirelessly charge on this one you don't have to or it doesn't have that uh, feature if you go down a little further you can see all the options to plug in your phone so you've got or plug in your devices so you've got two uh, 12 volt ports on either side both 180 watt uh, uh, plugs so both good power the USB plug in the center is where you would plug in for your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, what I like about that is you can plug it in there, set it here with all the spare cord, and still save all this area for whatever you need to put there. And, of course, in a standard transmission car, your hands are busy, your feet are busy. That means you're going to use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay a lot more because we're all pretty connected, and you're going to want to probably text and drive, which you shouldn't do unless you're voice texting. Here we go. The piece that everybody wants to see. Now, anybody want to guess... How many, I, I read a stat a while ago, uh, in 2019, anybody want to guess how many um, American, new American cars were sold with a manual transmission in a percentage? So tell me percentage of car sales, how many had a manual transmission? If you know that, we'll get back to that in a second. All right. One thing that I was a little disappointed about. So Kia Canada, if you're watching, they know I'm mad at them about this. I do have heated seats in this car, three levels of heated seats. What I don't have is the heated steering wheel anymore. In the 2019 model, we did have a heated steering wheel and uh, we don't anymore. Somebody's guessing 15% of American new vehicle sales were um, manual transmission. I'm gonna disappoint you. 1.1% of American new vehicle sales last year were manual transmission. Now, I don't want you to be too disappointed. Everybody gets mad and says, oh, we should sell more, we should carry more. We have, I think, I just checked online, there's six manual transmission Fortes in stock at our own dealership. In the US, electric vehicles are outpacing manual transmission vehicles. So electric vehicles are selling at 1.6% of the market of new vehicle sales. Manual transmissions are 1.1. So when you guys get mad at dealerships for not carrying the cars, yes, that's true, but we're also just not buying the cars. Like I said, we have six in stock now. So if you want a manual transmission Forte, you should come buy it. All right, I wanna show you a few more things in the wheel. We're gonna get out and show you a lot more. There's plenty more to show you. We keep these videos to about 20 minutes to half an hour tops. Here's where everything's kind of interesting on a base level car. You do have a nice looking wheel here. It is a leather or, you know, fake leather trimmed uh, steering wheel. I don't know if it's fake or real leather. I assume it's fake leather, but it feels quite nice. You can see the stitching along the side there. You also have the same kind of uh, metallic look down here. The same steering wheel we have in a lot of our cars. Uh, cruise control on the outside. These three buttons here, they control that center information display. So that's what we talked about earlier, which you can see all kinds of information in there. 
And then this side here, you have your Bluetooth controls right there. You can speak to your car and ask it to call someone for you. And of course you have your audio controls as well. You do have automatic headlights. I don't know if you can see that there, but I switched them to automatic and the lights turned on there. And uh, so automatic headlights are standard in this car. And you know what, we'll leave lights on so when we go back outside you can see power windows, power locks, uh, standard as well. You can lock out the rear windows if you have kids in the back, you wanna keep them out. A Couple other things I wanna show you when we get out of here. The seat, of course it's not a powered seat. This is a base level, entry level car. What you do have though, is this lever here. And I'll try to do that from an angle. I'm not on the right angle here. But you can see I can raise and lower the seat. I don't know if you can see it coming up on the angle you're on. Maybe look at it across there. Yeah, it's a little hard to show though. Stabilization is just kind of shaking it. But you can raise and lower the seat. So if you're sharing this car with anyone, you can raise and lower the seat. And of course the steering wheel is adjustable as well. You can pop it down and it is tilt and telescopic. So let me just show you that for two seconds here. I've got it released. So of course you can bring it up or down and you can bring it in or out quite a bit long ways. So a lot of people, when they buy these entry-level cars, it's a car that they share. They buy it for economical reasons, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But if you're sharing this car, the height adjustable seat, tilt and telescopic steering wheel make it a really, really good car to share. You can fit people easily. Now, again, I don't know if I've adjusted the seat directly where I needed it. Kia is amazing with rear seat space. Uh, a lot of these small cars, they don't have a lot of rear seat space. So I'm gonna hop in here. We'll see if I can show you. So not the best view, but you can see the space between my knees and the seat in front of me. And it's basically, I could drive there. I might move it an inch or two, but I don't need to move it much. My feet are easily, easily, easily underneath this seat. My legs are on, I don't know if I can show you. My legs are on the seat right here. So you have a lot of comfort. And that's really where some of these newer small cars and small crossovers are terrible. They just, you cannot fit a six foot person. I should also point out I had plenty of headroom up there. We do have a light running across there right now just for my video. But you have tons of headroom and it's a nice, like easy place to get in and out of. You've got wide opening doors. So if you're putting child seats in there, you've got tons of space to put your child seats in to get them buckled. And yeah, somebody says amazing car that loves driving them, exactly. The other thing that's nice is base level trim. These are soft on the armrest. So where you're putting your arm on the door, soft touch, not hard plastics. A lot of people are really impressed. Again, the reason this one Canadian or was runner up, Canadian small car of the year for 2019 and runner up for overall car of the year is some of those features like that. I was gonna show you the lights again. Remember I said it's kind of a patterned look. So again, a lot of cars would just kind of put a light in there. You'd have just it fill whatever space it fills out. But again, this car, you would never know by looking at it that this is an entry level car that costs less in real dollars, MSRP, than my 2002 Elantra did. All right, we're gonna turn the key off for a second. I wanna talk, I wanna show you the trunk for a second and I wanna talk transmission and power options again because there's some interesting things there. All right, so again, I've got that key in my hand. Let me switch camera hands here. All right. So there's the key there. You can see with the buttons. I want you to sort of look at that dot right there as what I'm gonna do is hold this button here. Hold there, that red light blinks. And at the same time, almost looks debadged, yeah. All right, I don't know if I can show you in here. Nope, oh, there we go, a little bit of light. Yeah, I'm just trying to play with the light. I have the light in the car and not outside. So the trunk in the Kia Forte is actually a class leading trunk. It's a 60-40 split. Uh, I should have brought a flashlight. <laughs> and uh, anyways, it is a 60-40 split. Let's just see how well we can get light adjusted in here. Nope, not very well. 60-40 split, class leading trunk, a lot of space. And another nice little feature that people don't notice, there's a little handle here. So a lot of people will shut their trunk like this. And what that does in the winter in Canada, especially, is you end up scratching that salt and that dirt off there. And what you don't have is uh, the ability to just do this, hold that handle there, close it like that. Tim's texting me, he wants me to know about, uh, wants to talk about uh, pricing. So I'm gonna do that in a second when I get back. How much horsepower? Great question, 147? Oh, yes, 147 horsepower. And so the, a lot of the times people bought manual transmissions because it was more fuel efficient than the automatic transmission. That is no longer the case. And that was sort of the last holdout of manual transmissions. People would buy them because it was more fuel efficient than an automatic. And that's not the case anymore. The, the uh, manual, or sorry, the automatic transmission is now more efficient with that IVT. And I'm gonna flip to my page here if I can find it. Bear with me. 
Here, you look at the car for two seconds. I'm going to get two hands free. We'll set my camera down. All right. If you have any questions, now's a good time to ask them. I'm just going to jump in, grab my sheet with two hands here, and I'm going to talk to you about fuel economy numbers real quick because the IBT transmission, let me just start over here. These are the key documents that I'm not supposed to show you at all, but I'm going to do that anyways. We'll go right down to the page here. All right. Manual transmission, 8.6 highway, 6.4 uh, liters in the, sorry, 8.6 city, 6.4 in the highway. IVT, 7.9, 5.9. Lower is better in Canada. It's 147 horsepower, 132 foot-pounds of torque. The manual transmission actually gets worse mileage. So that's a big reason why we have the automatics taking over. Whoops, this camera's fighting me. There we go. All right, Tim had a question for me. My computer went to sleep, so let me just pop it back open, Tim, one second. I know he wrote down programs for me because that's one thing I do not memorize. All right, Tim wants me to talk about programs. So 1.49% up to 60 months on this car. 72 and 84 months is 2.49% less than 1% loyalty. So if you already own a Kia, if you drive a Kia, this is a, uh, it's an extra 1% savings on those. And of course, the programs could change in April and you have 120 days of no payments, of course. Part of that uh, sort of COVID-19 sale is 120 days of no payments. So we have five manual transmission Fortes in five, I think maybe even six, um, in multiple colors. And you know what, while we're here, let's just take a look at my screen because I did have that up. Wow, this thing's turning real slow on me. There we go. We're going to jump over to here, new vehicle inventory. So this line up here, you can go to our website, www.brantfordkia.ca, and I will show you, whoops, hopefully I didn't click that, I did. Hold on. I'm trying to work with my left hand here instead of my right hand. Oh, it doesn't like me. Anyways, there are at least six of these in stock. In blue, gray, I think there's a white one as well. A um, couple different colors in there. So if you're interested in this car, now's a really good time to buy one. Um, like I said, about $1,000 cheaper than my first car. Uh, anybody want to see under the hood, let me know. I can show you that. In fact, I think we'll do that real quick. So, like I said, this car, ABS brakes, um, traction control, of course, stability control, of course, disc brakes all around. I'm going to set the camera down for one second as I pop the hood, just so I'm safe and I don't drop the hood. And uh, the other thing it's got is uh, hill start assist. Love to see the motor. Perfect. All right. So hill start assist is a kind of cool feature. If you are learning to drive standard transmission, you remember how every us, all of us when we learned to drive, we'd roll back and that was a big fear if you came to a stoplight and you had to roll back? This car won't do that. It'll just uh, stop real nice and hold the brake on for a second so you can find the clutch and uh, accelerate forward. There's the motor, two liter, like I said, 147 horsepower motor. Multi-port injection again, that's what we're going back to now. You can see it's just, you know, nice and lots of room around it to work on, so easy to work on. You've got your coolant out front, washer fluid right there, engine oil is easy to check as well. So, and again, hooked up to your manual transmission. So we tend to take these videos about 20 minutes to half an hour. We're about 23 and a half minutes in. I'm going to take a glance here and see if there's any questions that I missed. And if you have any questions, that was a great time. Why doesn't the GT model come in manual and with fog lights? Okay, that's a really good question. So the GT, manu the GT model does come in a manual transmission, um, just not in Canada. So I, there's a video on our YouTube page where I talked to Michael Kopke, K-O-P-K-E, and uh, he is the mar head of marketing in Kia Canada. We drove, went out in my EV, and um, we talked about why there's no manual transmission, and he said the reality is essentially we don't buy them. Um, in enough volume. And like I said, we mentioned earlier in the video, 1.1% of US new vehicle sales are manual transmission. So they have to make some decisions along the way about which cars are going to carry and which cars are going to sit on dealer lots. And um, the amount of cars that they would produce that would sell, I'm with you, I would totally buy one. But the problem is a lot of time we say that and then we actually don't buy one. So uh, yeah, somebody else says, bring them to Canada, save the manuals, exactly. So we don't have that. And then the fog lights uh, is another good question. So um, you can see on this car here, there's a spot for fog lights. And when they first brought out the launch edition models in Canada, 
These lights up here on some of our models were actually LED lights. There was a little X pattern there. And actually there's still an X pattern on this one, but it's in chrome, not in the uh, LED lighting. So down there we had fog lights, but the LED lights and the yellow fog lights that uh, they didn't add a lot of light. So that is something they did take away. I don't know why they took it away. It's just sometimes it's a cost measure just to keep at a price point. And uh, I can tell you with the LED lights, when it did have the um, halogen fog lights, they didn't really add any extra light to the road. So that was part of it as well. All right, I'm just going over the questions again. If you've asked your question, go ahead. I'm gonna try to go over it now. If you haven't, now's a great time to ask. Let's see what we've got. Does it have a CD player, someone asked? Uh, no. So CD players are gone the way of the 8-track, the cassette tape. They're not coming back. It's not just us. It's most of our competitors are also getting rid of those. Uh, you can stream your music with Bluetooth, even in this car. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you have lots of uh, music streaming options as well. And uh, so, yeah, no, um, no CD players almost at all in any of our cars, I don't think, anymore. They're all sort of fading away. If they weren't going to add, they should have changed the empty. Yeah, so you're asking, the, it's, you know what? It's a good point. We get a lot of criticism. So why did they leave the grill looking like this if they're not going to put the fog lights in? The reality is, um, same reason that there's buttons over here. Let me just show you in the car. The car has to be built on a production line for the entire world, essentially. And there are spots here where there are no buttons there. And there are spots here where there are no buttons there. And that's just, again, as they equip it with certain levels of equipment, um, you won't have those things. Somebody wants to know spare tire. Anybody want to guess if it has a spare tire or not? I know the answer. I'll show you right now. Pop the trunk here. Oh, yeah, it's too dark. I might not be able to show you. Let's see what I can do here for you. There is a huge underfloor storage underneath there. And I think you know what that means. Yep, the answer is no. So uh, there is an inflator kit. Now everybody's moving away from, um, from spare tires, especially in this class of car. Um, they'll tell you it's a fuel savings measure. I think we all know it's a cost savings measure as well. If you want a spare tire, I believe we can still get one and get the plastic or the styrofoam um, that goes with it and the jack, all those things that come with it. We, I believe you can still get one, just have to order it. Uh, well, you can order it anytime, but I would advise ordering it with the car when you do it. Now, the other thing is you do have five years, 100,000 kilometers of roadside assistance with this car. So sometimes it's a little bit less of a concern for some people than others. Um, I'm with you. I'm a spare tire fan. We don't always get them anymore. All right. You guys have been great for questions on a car with almost no options. I appreciate this. We're at 27 and a half minutes. We're going to close this up by 30. So if you have any uh, questions, ask me now. I will be happy to answer them. Like I said, every day at two o'clock, we're doing these live videos. We are in our unfinished video bay. Uh, we're working here as part of the sort of COVID-19 stuff. And I'm happy to come to you live. Tomorrow, we're gonna do the 2020 Kia Niro SX. So that's the loaded Kia Niro. I'm a big fan of that car. A lot of cool features to show you in there. Why no CD player? I think we covered that. I think it's just, uh, we don't need them anymore. Will you do a review on Hyundai Elantra GT N-Line? No, I work at a Kia dealer, so I don't think I'll be able to do that. Um, we can do uh, Kias for sure. Sometimes I've helped out at a Hyundai dealer. You may find me online there, but uh, we're going to do just Kias for now until somebody pays me huge money to do something else. Um, yeah, so tomorrow we'll do the Kia Nero 2020. And how long is the full parts warranty? Uh, so in Canada, we are 100,000 kilometers, five years. And... Uh, I gotta watch my wording about full parts warranty, but uh, there we go. You drive 2017 Nero, looking forward to tomorrow. Perfect, if you, want, if you drive the Nero, we'll see you tomorrow at two o'clock. Does the GT exhaust pop and crackle? Great point. Okay, so we did the GT Forte a couple uh, days ago. Yeah, so Tim's just letting me know this compact spare. We can get it, it's about $400. You can throw that in right from the beginning. We can deliver your car with that. Uh, the GT exhaust, we did the Forte 5 GT just the other day. The exhaust on that car is amazing. So it's got a whole different rear suspension than this car. It's got a whole different rear or exhaust system, of course, different engine transmission. Uh, that car legit has a cool uh, burble and pop kind of sound with the GT. So not super aggressive that you'll wake up the neighbors, but just cool, like factory cool. So this car, like I said, comes right from this car right to that GT5. Uh, if you haven't watched our live video, you can do that on the Forte 5 GT. We might cycle some of these cars back through if there's interest. And uh, Tim says, oh, okay, so tomorrow we're doing the 2019 Nero SX, not the 2020. That's correct. Yeah, there is no 2020 Nero SX out right now, uh, just the 2019. So uh, good point, uh, Tim helped me out. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Lots of interaction. I really appreciate you. And uh, we are going to wrap this video up. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below when this video is done being posted. And again, we'll see you tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Weekdays at 2 o'clock, we're going to be in our little unfinished video bay here. 
And we're going to do these live videos on all kinds of cars. So I want to thank everybody for watching, and we will see you again tomorrow with the 2019 Kia Niro SX.